Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. This week, Transnet named their preferred bidder for an inland container terminal concession in Gauteng. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about the significance of this development. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this project and who is in the running to build and operate the terminal? Well, the project's been on the cards from a Transnet perspective for a number of years. In fact, the request for proposals, I think, went out in early uh, 2016. Uh, but as we know, the economy has been in a very difficult position. Transnet itself uh, is the subject now of a Zondo Commission inquiry into state, the state capture years and what happened there. So it's been a very protracted tender process. But basically what it uh, boils down to is that Gauteng um, is still a key uh, trade hub, not only for the, the very big and gro fast growing population uh, of South Africa, but also uh, into the region. And we need additional uh, inland container terminal capacity. We've got the large city deep con uh, terminal uh, in place, which is a transnet run terminal. And this is really concessioning out of the private sector a, uh, a new inland terminal in the south of Gauteng, near Fosleris, and it's links into the, the Natcor corridor, which is the, the rail corridor from the port of Durban into Gauteng, and into the N3 network, uh, which is the, the road network. So it's an intermodal terminal, very important for keeping cargo running efficiently in the future of Gauteng. And this concession has been granted to a consortium led by Southern Palace, a big black empowerment. Uh, industrial holding company with very many uh, fingers and very many pars, uh, ranging from Concor, the construction company, uh, to Genrec, um, to School Metals. But this is, uh, they will lead a consortium made up of other technical partners, one from Italy and a uh, logistics partner from South Africa, as well as, uh, you know, design and engineer capabilities from AECOM and uh, Concor will be the con constructor of this project. And then uh, there's another Italian uh, element to it. So it's a big greenfield development um, and uh, one that I think is going to be quite important uh, for, for Gauteng and for Transnet and for South Africa. When will construction on the terminal start and when will it be in operation? Well, what we've got now is the preferred bidder, and that's, as I say, taken very many years to get there. Part of the, the delay was, I think, when the new Transnet board came in to clean up, it had to put it across its eyes across all projects and contracts and concessions that Transnet had were, was in the process of awarding, this being a major one. And it seems to have been sort of uh, validated and stress tested for one being aligned with uh, Transnet's internal policies of its public sector participation, as well as South Africa's um, constitutional requirements for, for public procurement, which requires things to be competitive, transparent and fair. And uh, it seems to have passed muster. So now we've got to the point where the Southern Balance uh, Consortium is, is named. Uh, then now the sort of, uh, sort of uh, legal and financial processes kick in. And that will involve, you know, uh, what is the actual concession? Uh, it's, it's for 20 years, but what are the terms of that? And is it going to be bankable for a project that will be 70% debt financed? And obviously the banks are going to be key in financing this 2.5 billion rand uh, infra new infrastructure for Gauteng. So we will see that process running from now till about October, September, October. And hopefully by then we'll see what we call financial close for a public-private partnership. And once financial close uh, is, is signed off and the bank finance is in place and the equity finance is in place, construction will begin. And the target date at the moment is around November. And uh, obviously there will be a period of construction and uh, this is going to be a state-of-the-art facility, the most modern equipment, the most modern systems, because uh, it's going to be almost uh, holding up, I think, a private sector or public-private partnership, what they can do for the logistics chain in South Africa relative to what we've seen. It's been a sort of transnet-dominated uh, system in the past. So it will be an important, important for competitive pressures in, in the logistics system. So that construction will take some years. 
And uh, the, the idea is that by the end of 2022, around uh, the third quarter, this will start operating a terminal of around 200 uh, TEUs a year. But with the concession apparently uh, providing scope to expand that to above 500 uh, TEUs, that's 20 foot equivalent unit containers, which is be a very significantly sized terminal. And that would be, uh, I suppose, I think around probably bigger than what we get at City Deep at the moment, it's around 4 million, uh, 400,000 uh, TEUs from what I remember. So it's a significant greenfields investment, a significant for logistics infrastructure. And the idea is that it will crowd in other uh, fast moving goods or, or warehouses or manufacturing that needs to be on that rapid moving corridor trading either import or export, hopefully more and more export as we scale up our industrialization again, hopefully, which has been in a dire straits for a number of years. And we saw the terrible PMI numbers coming out again this, this year, showing that we're still in contraction from a manufacturing perspective. Uh, manufacturing also sort of was contracted massively as part of the first quarter shock of a 3.2% contraction in the GDP of South Africa. Uh, so this is seen as a possible place to sort of revive investment, revive a manuf a fast moving manufacturing around that logistics hub. And they're talking about a 20 billion type of crowding in around this 2.5 billion rand project. What does this say about the broader investment climate in South Africa? Well, I think it couldn't have come at a better time. It is flying well below the radar. But I think if we saw the mess in, uh, in terms of the GDP figures that I referred to, that was a disastrous, the, the terrible uh, PMR result, which shows that we're going to be st we're still in contraction from a manufacturing perspective. And uh, I suppose this uh, internal fight within the ANC for control of the sort of economic policy, which I think has been uh, had quite deleterious effects on the RAND, and on confidence around you know, the role of the Reserve Bank and this proposal of quantitative easing. To have a firm greenfield investment announced, I think, was quite important. And I think we, we, even though it goes back many years, I mean, this goes back to probably the first years, the uh, first term of the Zuma administration. That's how long this, this project's been spoken about. Uh, it's part of SIP2. I don't know if you can remember the strategic infrastructure projects, too. It's part of that Durban. Uh, Free State, Gauteng, Corridor, uh, those big plans that we had back then, which have not really materialized. But it's really the first green, large scale, I suppose, public-private partnership, green fields investment under the new uh, Sir Ramaphosa presidency, other than, say, sort of those dusting off of the renewable energy projects right at the beginning of his, of his term, which came uh, you know, after he was elected. Uh, president of the African National Congress and the country. So these are, this is an important signal that, uh, that there is still opportunity in South Africa to invest in, in, uh, in real infrastructure that is going to be about lowering the logis logistics costs for Gauteng, uh, which have been rising, and ultimately, I suppose, improving the, the logistics experience of residents in that uh, there will be a more symbiotic relationship between road and rail at the moment, I think it's the underperformance, particularly of the general freight business of Transnet Road, is is coming as really dominating uh, the the container trade. Um, uh, we know that rail still does very well on the heavy haul side, but on the container trade, uh, road is the dominant uh, force, um, and maybe this will bring a bit more of a balance. So I think the signal is good, and um, we I suppose the hope now is that there'll be a number of these things that have been lying dormant or latent for a number of years, things that are being spoken about as public-private partnerships or even private investments that we'll start seeing. And I think the quicker, earlier we start seeing some of these projects, the better, because I think uh, South Africans are feeling battered and bruised. Confidence is at a very low ebb. So if there are these big public-private partnership projects that can be announced and we can start seeing shovels in the ground, people being employed trains on the horizon, I think the, the, the mood will shift in a positive direction. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.